Did you go to an Ivy League school or Stanford? University of Toronto. That's oh, yeah. state's oh. All right. Game two of Duke's Canadian tour pitted them against the University of Toronto. This is what happens when a couple of outliers make highlights against your team, Gladwell. Statistically, it was more of the same as RJ Barrett and Zion physically overwhelmed the collegiate Canadians while playing the most minutes and taking, again, by a lot, the most shots. RJ and Zion put up 53 of Duke's 81 shots and 42 of their 76 shots against Toronto. Since we focused on overreacting to Zion's Herculean maiden voyage in the last video, we'll focus on RJ in this one, but I'd also like to add really quickly that Zion was incredible again as a rebounder, as a ball handler, and as a playmaker. Also had a couple plays in this one where he looked like Godzilla romping around and destroying cities for fun. Nike, if you're listening, first of all, you should hire me, and secondly, this would be a fantastic time to bring back one of the best commercials of all time. Plus, there's a Godzilla movie coming out. Come on, this is easy. Anyway, let's talk about RJ. RJ was much more patient and deliberate about taking good shots in this game and eliminating his tougher, in tight space, mid-range pull-up that dominated so much of his performance against Ryerson. RJ is a lot like Zion in the fact that he often lacks rhythm when he's shooting off the dribble, which for Barrett seems to really bother his ability to transfer energy up through his body. He's inconsistent about it. When he's not taking his time, his feet don't seem to totally be under him and it affects the flight of his ball and his accuracy. At times it looks like he's floating backwards or forwards just slightly and you can see that it causes him to be long or short as a result and affects his accuracy. As a catch and shoot guy, Barrett's release isn't snappy quick, but the mechanical consistency has improved over the last couple of years. It's well known that he is a client of Drew Hanlon, who's really good about fixing this kind of stuff. In this game, he went three for eight from the three point line, but he appeared to take his time on most, if not all of them, and the touch looked more than sufficient. Some of these I would classify as good misses because they're well within his wheelhouse to take and technique wise these are well executed so these are good misses i think you live with three for eight if you're rj barrett or duke although he's taken eight threes in both of these games and i don't see him taking that many during the regular season some of that production inevitably is going to transfer over to reddish and jones the shooting though is and will continue to be a big fat pulsating question mark for rj's ceiling improving but still highly questionable beyond taking wide open threes the catch and shoot stuff is nice, and RJ's a more than capable playmaker, but his most frustrating to deal with offensive skill is his penetration. He doesn't wow with slick one-on-one -on -one dribble moves in space, but RJ's quick footwork in the middle of the floor is really impressive and difficult to stop. He just consistently finds ways to get there, and his deceptive strength allows him to just plow through guys off the dribble, like a running back who just keeps his feet moving. And if he gets going to the left side of the floor in transition, it's pretty much over. No angle is too extreme, and he's very, very good at observing absorbing contact and making controlled finishes. His wingspan helps a lot in this way. Absorbing constant physical pressure that he puts on you is one thing, but he's also nifty at Euro stepping around guys when they decide that they're going to put all their weight into walling up on him. RJ's size and vision are a great tool for Duke this year too, as he does have an ability to create once he's gotten into the lane, and he gets in the lane a lot. He's going to draw a lot of fouls this year. As a finisher, he's a far cry from the explosive athlete that Zion happens to be, which is something that you could say for, I don't know, every homo sapien drawing breath in this life or the next. But RJ's an above average athlete and is fearless attacking the rim, although he's not going to just flat out beat you by out jumping you. He's not an effortless fluid athlete, but he's more of an abrupt start and stop type of a guy that has pretty decent top end speed in the open floor. Barrett's already got the physical tools to be a high-level defender, and at times he looks the part of a guy who could be a shutdown wing going forward. I've said it in other videos, but he's a dogged, relentless player that just keeps coming. It's the worst-kept secret in the world that RJ is also very much an alpha personality, really confident, really expressive, and it's been said that he demands a lot from his teammates. Maybe even a little hard to play with, I've heard some of that, but hey, it's like I've always said, if you're good enough at something, people will tolerate you being difficult. If you stink, people just won't tolerate you at all. That said, RJ is a gamer, clearly in the truest sense, and I don't know him at all, so I don't know what he's like. I'm just speculating on what people have told me. I'm still working out who exactly I would compare RJ to, but to me, he's somewhat of a mix between Jalen Rose because of the size and the playmaking, and Andre Iguodala because of his court sense and tireless physical nature. His ability to change directions mid-drive is very advanced, and with his long arms and wide shoulders, that motor can be tiring to constantly deal with. It just wears people down. So who would you take? 
RJ Barrett or Zion Williamson? How has the discussion changed for you if it has it all over the last two games? Does Coach K dye his hair? Is Grayson Allen the love child of Jeremy Renner and Ted Cruz? Let me know. See you next time. Hey folks, I appreciate you watching and if you like this video, click the like button and be sure to subscribe. You can also follow me on Twitter at, at @jkyleman. Say hey.